Hi, I'm going to be talking about tinnitus or tinnitus. They're both correct pronunciations. And if you've got it, you're probably watching this video because you've got it and you know what it is. It's uh, sounds that you only hear in your head or in your ear. It's not from the outside world. It can be buzzing or crickets or rushing or pulsing or screeching or anything like that. And there's three general causes. One is structural. You've got a structural problem in your middle or, it, or inner ear. Uh, one is blockages. And the third is mystery causes. And I'll primarily be talking about mystery causes. My name is Hilma Volk and I was a massage therapist for 23 years and I'm a certified nutritional coach. Anyway, if there's structural damage to your middle or inner ear, it could be caused by uh, exposure to loud noises, be it machinery or music, or if you're in the military or have been, you see an action and there's bullets flying or explosions, uh, that could be a cause, uh, or concussions. Uh, anyway, there's something damaged in part of your ear. And I'm not going to go into any of that part. In order to determine that, you need an otolaryngologist. I think I pronounced that right. Which is simply an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And they're the only ones who could really ter determine whether or not you have structural damage. And not a general practitioner, because they usually don't have the diagnostic tools that a specialist does. And also they don't have as much experience with the hearing <laughs> and hearing problems and tinnitus and that sort of thing. So it's best to go to those to determine what your problem is. And in many cases they say, well, it's not curable. But your specialist may know of research going on. They may know of clinical trials that are going on. And there's also organizations. And I've got a link in the description of one source that does have a list of the different things, organizations that cover hearing and tinnitus. And also these sites may have lists of doctors in your areas. Check on different sites because they have different information. And some of them may have access to um, clinical trials that you can sign up for and things like that. But the structural thing uh, I'm not going to go into because um, that I probably can't help you with at all. But the mystery causes and the blockages. Blockages uh, can come from earwax buildup, uh, ear mites, dead insects, uh, dirt, <laughs> hair clippings if you've got short hair from just getting your hair cut. And they may be temporary or they may become permanent. And it's really best if you have a specialist to clean out these deep things, but I will discuss uh, some things that people have tried to clean out their own ears without, you know, ramming a stick down your ear. One thing that's not a huge mystery is that some medications will cause ringing in the ears. And when you stop taking those medications, those go away, and I'm not going to play doctor on you and tell you to stop your medications. But you do want to know what the side effects are of what you're taking. You can take your drugs to your doctor and they may or may not know the interactions. A pharmacist should. And if you don't know uh, what you're taking or what they're for, whatever, go to drugs.com, D-R-U-G-S dot com. And uh, it has doctor speak uh, things about those medications. It also has ordinary language speak <laughs> about what those medications do, what side effects they have, what interactions they have, and all that type of stuff. So know what you're taking and why, okay? So uh, there also could be medications not known uh, that cause ringing in the ears that also cause ringing in the ears. And I'll discuss some supplements, not by name, but in general categories when I talk about the next thing, which is foods and drinks. Now, some people have sensitivities to certain foods and supplements and drinks. And a big one, or the big ones, are ones that stimulate your brain. Because mystery things can be from the way your brain cells and nerves and stuff communicate with each other. And it could be misinterpreting these signals as noise. So one of the big ones 
<laughs> is coffee. And I suggest that you do an elimination diet for seven days. It's going to take a few days for any of these things to get out of your system in order to know if it's causing the ringing in your ears or not. So a big one is coffee and decaf doesn't help either because uh, it's the alkaloids in the coffee, not only the caffeine. And if you absolutely have to have caffeine, you know, drink something like green tea or even tea, it's not quite as bad as the coffee is, but seven days. You also want to eliminate Monosodium, monosodium glutinate MSG, which should never be put in food, and so many companies put it in food because it's so bad for people and it's a flavor enhancer. And also aspartame, that's, I've got a link to a video from 60 Minutes, the TV show, on what that does to your brain, allegedly. And so no aspartame or other diet sugar diets. Aspartame is also called NutraSweet or Equal. But for seven days you want to avoid entirely any additives that are added to food. You should have foods that only have one ingredient or you can have the one ingredients mixed with each other but you don't want any food additives from processed foods or soups or anything else. MSG is found in all kinds of soups and prepared meals and even potato chips for gosh sakes but also preservatives nitrates all that stuff just keep your food simple bread is not one ingredient bread is multiple ingredients if it's if you make it you know it's you know what's in it but if it comes from the store read the ingredients there's always additives in anything that's got a long shelf life. So for seven days keep your diet simple, avoid certain things like that, and what can you eat? Rice is a good one. Lentils, uh, legumes, uh, chicken especially if it's not got hormones in it. It's easier now than ever before to get uh, chicken that's not raised with antibiotics and hormones. It used to be pretty tough to get that. But also, just about any vegetable except tomatoes and potatoes and corn, just for seven days. And <laughs> it's okay to eat just about any fruit. So, if that clears your tinnitus up or makes it less loud after seven days, uh, and then you start drinking a couple of coffees because you think, wow, you know, maybe I'm cured. And you may not feel anything for the next several days, maybe three or four, five days before that catches up with you again. So if you bring stuff back into your diet, you have to wait several days to find out if it's causing you a problem or not. So that's one thing. Another thing you want to avoid in that seven day elimination diet is energy drinks and supplements that are for stimulating the brain. Some people have sensitivities to electromagnetic frequencies and those can be caused by your appliances in your house, uh, your uh, electric alarm clock even, uh, the TV of course, and the computers and the cell phones, and outside the cell phone towers and electrical power lines and stuff like that, which is really hard to get away from, but if you've got three days off and can go to where there's no <laughs> cell signals, uh, which is fairly easy to do in my part of the country because there's mountains and valleys and canyons and stuff. Uh, but other parts of the country, it may not be so easy. But if you can get away, go camping or rent a cabin somewhere for three days uh, and see how, how your ears are doing, that might be a good thing. So another thing, it's not a mystery really, is jaw pain or jaw alignments. Now, if you're have a bite problem, if you're grinding your teeth, if your jaw pops, uh, that can cause ear problems. Tightness in the jaw has a very direct effect on your ear. I've got a couple links in the description below for YouTube videos that show you how to adjust your own jaw or make it more aligned. Uh, I don't <laughs> have expertise in showing you that, so I won't. But 
there is a muscle in your neck called the sternocleidomastoid that can also produce effects in your ear and some people when they release this actually hear better and the sternocleidomastoid SCM for short goes from below your ear down to uh, right at the edge of your collarbone here there's a notch between your two collarbones so when you turn your head back and forth when you turn it the opposite way your your fingers are you'll really feel that muscle stick out what it does is it turns your head in the opposite direction that it is so the muscle on this side turns your head that way now to work on it you can turn your head to the same side that muscle is remember it goes between the lower ear and down there and when it's relaxed, meaning you turn your head the same way it is, you can grab that muscle. I'll show you here, and you can massage it gently because a lot of people have tenderness in that muscle and they don't know it until they squeeze it and they go, oh wow, that's really tender. Or you can work on where it's attached. Uh, to find it again, turn your head back and forth and you can really feel that, but where, when you've got the muscle relaxed so it's not sticking out, turn your head the same way. You can work on it down there and you can also work on it up where your below the ear is. Again, turn your head back and forth. Some people think it's a swollen gland but if it moves back and forth or contracts and, and tightens up under your fingers you'll know you're on the right place. And again, this muscle can be very tender so if you work on it too hard or too long, you can make that muscle really sore. So you want to be gentle with it if it's tender and just work on it a little bit, maybe half a minute on each side and uh, just go back to it frequently but gently, okay, until it loosens up under your fingers. Now supplements that may help alpha lipoic acid and ginkgo biloba may help, you know, depending on what your condition is and apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is so good for so many things and the best way to do it is have a, a tablespoon or two in a big glass of water three times a day ideally and if it's too acidic uh, you can add some honey to it. It's really good for digestion, it's good for all kinds of things and you want to drink it with a straw preferably so the acid is not affecting your teeth and maybe rinse with a baking soda and water afterwards so slush your, so you're not getting that acid on your teeth in the meantime. You never want to drink it straight because it's too acidic. It can burn your esophagus or <laughs> can really make it unhappy. A deficiency in vitamin B12 is fairly common. Vitamin B12 is very important for your brain anyway. I was reading about this lady who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and three years later it was discovered that she just had a vitamin B12 deficiency. And as you get older, most people have a hard time absorbing B12 so it has to be taken underneath the tongue and you can get the lingual type of B12 at a health food store or supplement store. For some people, it's a deficiency in magnesium. And magnesium is good for your body and all kinds of things. Generally, if you have a shortage of magnesium, you might also have leg cramps, which is also caused by deficiencies in all the electrolytes, any of the electrolytes, which are calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. Or those could be, yeah, the leg cramps could be caused by dehydration as well. Something that has helped some people is Essiac tea, which can be found at health food stores, and that's good for a whole bunch of <laughs> health things as well. It's healthy tea. Again, these are things that have helped people in the past, and again, people have the problem for different reasons. One thing that has helped some people is melamine tincture. Ten drops in the morning, ten drops at night in a glass of water. This is something you drink. Another thing is zeolite <laughs> drops, which you put in water and drink. And what that does, it attaches itself to, itself to uh, heavy metals that might be in your body and carries them out of your body. So if you've had mercury or lead or anything else, it supposedly will help clean that out of your body. And that can cause problems in the brain chemistry too. 
It could also be an iron deficiency. Now, Dr. Oz says you see your lifelines on your palm. Well, if those don't show up good, you could have an iron deficiency if, if the lifelines are pale. So, just an iron supplement or blackstrap molasses, uh, something like that. Here's one that's helped a bunch of people. is a half a teaspoon of baking soda in a glass of water with maybe three drops of hydrogen peroxide, the 3% hydrogen peroxide that you get in the grocery store, and just three or four drops of that, and a glass of water to take that morning and night. So here's an oddball one. <laughs> this person was in a swimming pool and they were floating on their back and they just let themselves sink into the pool until they were about a foot underwater and they just held their breath as long as possible and when they got out their tinnitus went away. Tinnitus, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> now there could be infections. Uh, fungal infections, whatnot. Uh, for clearing out the ears, some people have used hydrogen peroxide, it's the three percent you get in the store, a few drops in their ear, uh, keeping um, your ear on your side for ten minutes, you know, you know laying in bed and have a paper towel or cloth or something <laughs> nearby. Uh, something that other people have had success with is putting a pea-sized piece of coconut oil in your ear and sleeping with that on the side or going for at least 10 minutes on the side. Another thing that has people have helped clear their ears out is apple cider vinegar. Again, uh, through the on the ear this time, uh, mixed with water. It's, I've seen different dilutions of apple cider vinegar. Maybe you want to start with 50-50 or 30-70, whatever. Uh, you can try that. Uh, people have used those little uh, pearls of garlic that you get in the vitamin counter. It's just garlic oil. And they um, will break that open, put that in their ear, again sleep on their side, again have a towel ready, and uh, that has helped some people. Here's another kind of oddball one. A person took a Sonicare toothbrush, an electric toothbrush, took the toothbrush part off, put one of those uh, erasers that you can just attach to a to a pencil or a removable eraser and around their ear, not in their ear, but around all kinds of their ear, they let the vibration from the toothbrush, um, now with an eraser on it, just uh, kind of massage around the ear. And lo and behold. Well there you are. No guarantees. A lot of different things you can try. And if you like the video, share it, subscribe, like it, or don't like it. Leave a comment below anyway. <laughs> what have you tried that has not worked or worked? Or, of course, everybody's very different in what their causes are, but hey, leave a comment.